Good evening and welcome to the Sunderland Elementary School Committee meeting, Tuesday, November 19th. Um, call the meeting to order at 7.05. Um, first item on the agenda is review and approve minutes of October 15th, 2013. Does anybody have any questions? No, well, first, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any discussion? No, I didn't have anything. Oh, I know what it was. The name of um, public comment, it was Julie Haneski, not Hennessy, parent of a fifth grader, came to think. Um, oh, would you oh could you give me the spelling, correct spelling? Hines can you give it the correct spelling? It's H A N S K I E. H A N S K I E. Yes. Okay. I can make that correction. Thank you. Thanks. I don't. I think it's H A N I E. She's going to kill me. H A N E S K I. Yeah. Okay, one more time. H A N E E S K I. S K I. Just get the S K I. Thank you. Yes, K I. Okay. Um, great. Next is financial statement. Good evening. Um, tonight we have October's report in front of us, and we do have one variance on page two. Uh, it is the computer registers. We have a variance of $850, and this is due to the move of the Redeker student database from a standalone server to cloud computing. This will be a reoccurring cost, and we will adjust the FY15 budget to reflect the increased cost. For, uh, but we don't have to maintain our own server here anymore. It makes uh, it much more efficient for the principal to be able to access the database uh, from any device, uh, not just his standalone computer. And it also allows us at the district to take all of the uh, different school districts and roll it up to do uh, district reporting. Um, you do have seven warrants to sign tonight, the fiscal agent payroll for October, uh, the monthly warrant, our student activity fund, uh, horizon expenses, which is your new program here in the building, um, school choice, school lunch, and then the after school program. Um, and I just want to let you know that on next month's agenda, we will be awarding, um, we're having you vote to award the new five-year transportation contract for Sunderland Elementary School. Uh, the bids were uh, open today, but they're not, they're not confirmed as a good bid yet, so we are not allowed to release the information until next month. How many people did we have? We did have two bidders. Great. Any questions? The comment? Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So on to new business um, discussion items. The budget timeline. Yes, uh, you have the timelines. This is the procedure that I know for those of you who've been on committee for a couple of years that we followed in the past. So at um, Next month's meeting on December 6th, we will be presenting the budget books, and that will be your first week. Um, Patty has been meeting with all of the principals. The principals have been meeting with not only her, but Bob Lesko, uh, Scott Hall, and Karen Ferrandino to go over kind of the big items. Um, we're trying to have people think in terms of one, two, and three-year plans so that um, there may be items that we wish to have for next year that we can't. So are there ways that we can do it incrementally over a couple of years period of time? So so we'll be bringing those to you. Is that the right date, December 6th? That sounds early for us under At our next meeting, did we? Well, oh yeah, you're right, Patty. You're right, Patty. Right. I don't have a calendar. Does anyone have? The 17th. Oh, I'm sorry, the 17th. Oh, okay. 17th, it's the next line down. Oh, okay. Yep. That's our internal. Oh, yeah, that's all, that's all. yeah. You said, you yeah. said December 6th. Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't, it's okay. Don't panic. <laughs> December 17th. You have plenty of time. Mm -hmm. So that's what I have for that. Great. Um, policy EEAA-1 bus riding. Yeah. 
if you want to turn uh, in your agendas, there is an existing policy, um, and Ben had had an inquiry from a parent to see if there might be a consideration, knowing that Waitley, Conway, and Frontier have amended their policies to include uh, school choice students who uh, might be on an existing route. And I'll give you the examples. We've had grandparents who are taking care of a student after school. Um, they live within the town that, you know, and on a bus route, and they have requested their granddaughter to be dropped off three days a week. Um, the way the other schools have approached it is that there is also a protocol, and the protocol states that the parents have to fill out um, an application. They have to um, approve it, that they're giving permission, that it has to be on an existing route, and there has to be room on the bus. So I can tell you district-wide, we only have about four students who take part. So it's not a large number. But because this parent brought it to Ben's attention, I thought I would give you the existing policy. And if you look at the amended policy, the sixth little paragraph down, um, this is the only difference between the two. It says the Sunderland School District provides transportation according to the existing routes for school choice students. There is a vote listed on this agenda. We, we don't do that. We bring it forward one month, and then we talk about it the next month. So, um, so I'm just bringing it to you for consideration. And what might be helpful next month if I bring some of the protocols that the other schools are, are looking at. Mm. I don't think you've had more than one inquiry. Just one up to this yeah. point. And that's typically what has happened at each of the schools. It's been one, and I think Conway has two students are taking part of it but generally it's um it's a relative and it's uh, a help to the parent uh, either dropping off in the morning or um, for rides and home. it's already on the route and it's already it has to be an existing bus stop and there's no income involved from the other district because it's a free service right no there's no money that would be exchanged right. it's not like additional money right. for busers and it's coming. not okay. costing us right money. No. no right no. So right this would have to be an existing bus stop correct I mean, yes. right there are no bus stops well it has to be I mean obviously if it's 102 River Road you know um, and there's nobody at 102 River Road but they want 104 River Road so it's on the on the route because we don't have like a designated bus building okay. or yeah. you know there are right. a lot of the the streets though man everybody kind of gathers at the right. end of one oh, or gotcha. another that makes sense. i think most of the kids at least in sunderland don't really get sort of door to door yeah. you know what i mean like i know some places do do that but everybody kind of goes to the end of a certain area like with claybrook road we all go to the end must be my own experiences so, i know yeah. i was picked I up in front of my house. driveway to driveway right? <laughs> yeah i was yeah. too yeah but, um, and that's typically what has, well, it happens that way. And then if you have somebody who's on a very rural route, mm -hmm. it does become more door-to-door -door right. service. Yeah. But in a more established area, it's, it's like Amy said, there is kind of a designated Common place. Yeah, that people have gathered. But so I'm just bringing it to you for, for consideration. But sure. those rural areas could be where this becomes problematic because if it's going for if the bus is going two and a half to three miles further than it would normally go before turning around that may be something mm -hmm. we want to think mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah so but you have the purview to you know to make that decision. So I don't know if that parent has come back to you but I'm just bringing it forward mm -hmm. to you to think about. I would think, especially in Conway, it would be interesting to see how they have it worded, because that's a place it's the same where this is exactly exact how it's worded. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. There, you could really go crazy there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like way out of the way. Mm. Okay. Okay. Great. So we'll talk about it again next month. Sure. Great. I'm voting on that. Um, uh, moving on to the 2013-14 school emergency evacuation plan. Yep. I brought this to you last month, and um, I had given it to all the principals for their input, and the only thing that was suggested or changed 
was that when we talked about the um, uh, vehicles for evacuation, they asked to have the names of the bus companies and their phone numbers listed right in the policy. So that's all we did. Mm -hmm. So it's the same policy that, or it's not even a policy, but it's the same protocol that you saw last month, except for that addition. Mm -hmm. So obviously, you hope that you never have a, a major disaster that you have to put this in place, but I think it's good to visit on a regular basis safety plans. And then the town do that mm -hmm. planning. Right. And so it was, I mean, I read through it, it's pretty exhaustive. Yeah. <laughs> the um, calendar change parent conference days for March yes 21st, um, so here's what happened we as you know we're doing a new report card for the elementary schools this year and originally the um, parent conference days were uh, reduced from uh, three in the spring to two and the reason for that was that they felt that parents wouldn't necessarily have to go to a spring conference unless they had questions or concerns on their child's report card and if we kept it the way it is now um, they wouldn't have a report card to make that determination and B it really interferes with the MCAS mm. so we're proposing and I brought it to um, the other two school committees proposing to move it from the 20th and 21st to April 10th and 11th that way, parents will have the report cards. They're going to be distributed in the spring. I think we figured around the 7th of April. So they'd have a couple of days to make a decision if they needed to schedule an appointment with uh, their child's teacher. It's always in April. I wonder why we went to March. I oh. think they were looking at, because it's a trimester, there's three reporting periods that they were trying to do it a little earlier. But... Um, it really late. doesn't make sense to do it around MCAS. About MCAS is what's really, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, and not to have, you know. Yeah, no, that's a real right. piece of information. Right. So yeah. Important. And are these half days? They're half days. Mm -hmm. Right. Could be, yeah. The same as the fall. The fall. Okay. They're all half days. Mm -hmm. So that we will need a vote on um, later on, or you can do it now. Yeah. Whatever do you we have any questions? questions? doesn't no. change it's no it's not contractual it's just a change right. to different <clears throat> dates okay yeah uh, do I have a motion to amend the calendar for 2014 March 20th and 21st change to April 10th and 11th so moved all those in favor aye aye it doesn't need to be seconded oh yeah Tracy I've decided okay. to second okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It makes it simple tonight. It just, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Very cut and dry. Yeah. <laughs> and November 5th, insert what you. Yeah. This is just information for you because it's already occurred and I know it doesn't feel, you know, timely. But I was just so impressed the way we did in service this year. Um, and I have to credit Louise Law and Sarah Mitchell for doing this. We had a full in-service day and we have limited funds and oftentimes we, I think educators especially, have a tendency to look for expertise outside of their area in their district and I think if you look at the events that were listed we clearly have a very high level of expertise within the district and what they did for this particular day is that they paired uh, elementary and secondary people together which was really fascinating to go to some of those um, workshops. I went to um, one and it was a high school teacher and a kindergarten teacher. So, but they were talking about technology and it, it worked out beautifully. So I'm just bringing it to your attention because it was, um, we received very good feedback. Sarah did a uh, follow-up uh, survey and it cost us almost no money other than some bagels. That's so that great. Yeah. And this is really nice to see, Marty. We <clears throat> very rarely get to see the, mm. what yeah, it's you're terrific. up to. <laughs> you know? right. so, yeah, it's um, terrific. And like I said, everybody, you know, they would love follow-ups to it. Yeah. Some of the uh, most popular ones were the technology ones using smart boards, uh, beginner and advanced, 
And um, the other one that was really popular was de-escalation techniques. And mm -hmm. Pete Crisofoli did that with Scott Dredge, and I think they did, I don't, know, I don't know if you remember, Ben, if they enlisted someone else to help because it got filled very quickly and they had to offer another one. Yeah, I don't recall, but also but, the um, school moves yes. was very um, popular and that dealt with self-regulating mm -hmm. strategies for teachers and right. instructional assistants mm -hmm. as well. So it was fun for me, you know, yeah. to go around and sit in on a few of them here and there to see what was going on and to see how these teachers were um, working with each other. Um, mm -hmm. Teachers who may not have really known each other otherwise right. beforehand. So nice to connect like that in the district. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just thought it would be helpful for you to to yeah, see that. Nice. So was the self-regulating for the te for the instructor? <laughs> it was the students helping them self-regulate. No, I mean I'm I'm actually being. Serious. No, it was it probably helped the uh, teachers self-regulate themselves um, as well. But it was strategies that the teachers could bring back to their classroom. To help the students. Okay. Okay. Um, I got who, you. Know, who might need body breaks? Right. 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 Um, okay. At the younger yep. level, or great. Yeah. 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 Very useful. Okay. And the workshops, they were all very hands-on, and you know, I, I attended two of the smart board yeah. workshops, and they were great, yeah. and they really just apply to everyone who's. Mm -hmm. You can almost yeah. tell right away when you're in something like that, you know, whether you should stay, you know what yeah. I mean, whether yeah. it's going to be worth can. or not. Mm -hmm. That's great. It's almost like how the um, the uh, conference is set up. You can go to different, yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean? Right. What a great, right. yeah. It's and that's what they did. They were able to pick and choose and go to one thing in the morning and something else in the afternoon. So it was, it was very worthwhile. Interesting. Thank you. And next we have enrollment trends. Well, I have provided you with way more information than you probably ever wanted, but I like data, so you're stuck with it, and uh, I'll probably be it's great. giving right. you more. Yeah. So if I could just draw your attention to the, the first page where it's the uh, graphs with the resident and uh, student enrollment. Um, this particular graph does include pre-K. As we look at some of the others, they don't. So it's easy to, to see that the numbers get skewed. But if you look at 2011 to today, um, you can see the change. And these are all October 1 reports. And then when you look down at school choice enrollment, if you look at it district-wide, there are currently 369 students within our district who are school choice. So it's become a very important aspect um, of our enrollment. And then if you look at, I, I broke it down so that you have all of the schools in front of you so that you have some comparisons. But when you look at Sunderland's, just keep in mind, uh, this is the 10 year comparison, that this does not include um, pre-K. And I also want you to just keep in mind that prior to 2002, school choice enrollments were so negligible that when you look at, at some of these other statistics, uh, where we go back to 1980, those were all, 1980 to 2002, these were residents, residents. resident population. One of the things that we're doing is um, we've compiled infor um, information to be sent to NESDEC and I can't remember what the acronym stands for, but they compute um, trends and population growth. So we've given them information. We're waiting for them to get back because that's an area that I find <coughs> difficult to predict. Um, and I think I was saying at the Frontier School Committee that when that building was proposed and yeah, voted in 1996, 97, 98, it was with the understanding that we would have, by now, well over a thousand students, <laughs> and that's not the case. But that was that was what the predictions right, were. Right. Um, so you really have to look at so many different things: the number of uh, building permits, you know, the number of uh, your census, which is often inaccurate. But I think it's important information to keep track of. When you go to your next chart. Um, it's just another way of looking at it. It's from 2009, 
to uh, 2013. This does include um, preschool and it has your residence and school choice. I want you to take a look at 2010 where your school choice went down to 14. And that was a direct result of your budget cuts and programmatic cuts. So um, I know I may be preaching to the choir, but it's an important thing to let the public know as well because it's back up to 41. It's unbelievable. And, um, and it takes, you know, I, I am surprised and pleased that it came back as quickly as it did because oftentimes it doesn't. So. And then the other one, which is your longitudinal study, which is 1980 to 2015, predicting. This does include kindergarten through 12th and special ed, but it does not include pre-K, all right? So, um, so it's, it's just good to keep, you know, an eye on. It's, um, it's really interesting it's, Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> probably when you think about your, yourself when you moved mm, here and right. when some of your areas sure. started to, to become more developed, you know, you can see population rising and falling. So, so that's what I have and um, bringing it forward to every school committee and you know play around with it, look at it and um, we'll keep you updated if anything changes and when I get the NESDEC report I'll certainly bring that. I think it'll be a month or two before we get that though. I think it was interesting um, someone made a comment too at the frontier meeting that although we were you know the building is still completely used mm -hmm. because the need has changed mm -hmm. so dramatically mm -hmm. in you know mm. the past 15 20 years the way we do things has changed well when i think when i started at frontier in 2002 um since 2002 we have added five special ed programs substantially separate self-contained and the level of the students who need services have become more profound so that you need additional rooms for equipment and PT and OT and you did not have those in the past. Mm -hmm. So that's seven classrooms right away that are used for those programs and equipment. So, <coughs> um, so the needs do change and that's in a relatively short period of time. Right. The way we do it. Uh, Okay, onward. Um, um, on to reports. I will start with um, my report. Um, I just wanted to thank um, Ed Hines for putting together a beautiful, heartfelt tribute to Tim Merritt. Um, the music, the tributes, and the children were combined for a wonderful celebration of Tim's life and achievements. I think that he would have approved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks to all that participated and Amy for the wonderful words on behalf of this committee. Um, and then I will just do my frontier update. Uh, we did some policies. These uh, we also did, did a concussion policy um, and the bus riding. Um, we bought a bus. But not a bus, a van. A multifunctional <laughs> school activity <laughs> bus. Is it like a helicopter? It's like, <laughs> it's like an airport like transport trans vehicle. <laughs> and Patty and I are doing the maiden run. So. <laughs> How many kids does it hold? 14. 14. So Plus it's, the driver. It'll, it'll be yeah, good 15 for all small teams and good. you know small events. And um, it's a great investment for our yep. And we're having the lettering done now. That's oh, fabulous. Right. <laughs> well, what um, color is it? White. white. It has to be white. Oh, has to be, yeah. Yeah. It can't be yellow. It it's can't look anything bus. like a school bus. Mm. Right. Because okay. that's a different licensing. And different. Oh, okay. Um, we also did the update on you know, the um, information on the population and also what happened to the graduating class of 2013. Um, which was 86% went on to two or four year college, mm -hmm. which oh, is wow. fabulous. 86%? 86%. That's and the majority, I want to say 56 at least, were four year. Yeah. 2% um, to military and 12% to the workforce and 1% to 
um, undecided, I think. No, it was, it was a, um, oh, a, a post, technical school. Yeah, mm -hmm. post, oh. yeah. Um, we went over the, um, which is great. Um, mm -hmm. And the list of schools was impressive, mm -hmm. to say the least. Um, went over the emergency evacuation plan and the in-service events. Um, the, um, I, I don't, I'm gonna bring this up now, that which mm -hmm. I had emailed you about the playground, if, mm -hmm. this is, if sure. that's okay. Um, so, the, Tracy and I have been working on something, and we're just gonna sort of present um, what it's about here briefly, and then we'll need to have a discussion and vote, uh, hopefully at our next meeting. Um, the current playground is about 20 years old here at Central Elementary. There are a number of concerns um, with, um, you know, it's just an older playground and it needs to have some improvements. Um, our goal is to revitalize the current playground to today's standards and also make it handicap accessible, accessible and incorporate a walking path with fitness stations. Sounds big, but really doable. Um, Tracy is also on a committee in town that is working on making the town itself more pedestrian friend friendly. So this will uh, work with that goal, just sort of a town-wide um, system of trails that they're working on. Um, we hope to pay for it um, with mostly um, CPA funds that are raised in the town by uh, the townspeople. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what, uh, you know, one of those things that, um, that was meant for um, and we'll also do some local fundraising um, and the school committee involvement we need a mechanism to run the funding through and also a sort of body in charge of it for the to make it work with mm -hmm. the CPA um, so yeah we'll need to talk about that yeah I have not found anything that gives the school committee authority okay um, the PTA has authority uh, the principals have authority uh, the principals have authority over student activity accounts but I have found no funds that can be set up for a school committee it's uh, not it well it would be a school it wouldn't be the school committee <laughs> it would be through the school and we just happen to be the two people that are so maybe it's not a school committee thing. Maybe it's more of just a. They suggested that it be a, a board. It, you know, I was gonna say, isn't that what they said? They board. they wanted a, a formal vote voting board. Group, but I don't know. And so I know, like with this, we don't ever have the money, Patty. It right. just it, it it's almost well. Someone has to have. It. Well, no. Someone has to have custody of the funds. The right. selectmen do. Yeah. We're just we're just proposing where the funds go and giving them the we're doing the work for where the funds go. The way it's worked in other towns is that somebody brings a proposal to the uh, CPA, right? And the, if they approve it, it still has to go on the town meeting. On right. The right. 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 Has to go exactly. on the annual yeah. warrant. Right. So the money is actually held by the town. Now, what I don't know is yes. how the bills are submitted for the work mm -hmm. and for the purchasing. That's the question I have. And I don't know if that's something that you need to get from we'll CPA. Yep. yep, okay, we'll figure that out. Because other groups have done this, okay. so. Um, well, I know like Conway had done there, so we could certainly mm -hmm. touch base with them right. and see. And I can call Margaret um, Nardowitz and see what, which information okay. she has okay. and get back to you on that. And, and the gentleman that we've been working with, um, Richard LaPaca. Richard LaPaca is, yeah. you know, he's the go-to Is he guy. still chair of yeah. the, okay. Yes. Um, so that's sort of, we're, we're sort of in the infancy of that, but working on getting, you know, estimates on just getting a plan Are together. you hoping to have something, if approved by them, on the warrant for April? Yes. Okay. So that's yes. your goal is to? Yes. Okay. And the application has not been, you know, completed yet and submitted. It's right. all just sort of just beginning. I think and it's so mid that's December. This, right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And January 9th, I think, is the deadline for your application. Okay. Yeah. Now, is this for the pre-K and K playground no. as well? No. It's just it's the back just one. Just the back. Right. Okay. But if there are things that need to be addressed in the pre-K and pay, you know, I mean, now would be the time to, to take a mm -hmm. look at everything and prioritize it and then, mm -hmm. you know, Okay. Problem is there's no design, design. Right. because right. the application process, while not lengthy, asks specifically 
for um, bids and pricing. Right. And you have to be careful about that because right. that's what they're going to vote on. Okay. So, right. Um, right. Yeah. So he's been, he's great. Richard's been great, and we'll sort of work with him and try to get this off the ground okay. so we can get it done. Some of the, the sort of headlines were the, the surface and, um, you know, as Justine said, the pathway, you know, adding, right. you know, so, but the, we, and it, it, revitalizing is the right word. It's not no. leveling and beginning again. Right. That is not the goal. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, you know, there's some concerns. And this is a new mechanism in town, which is right. which is great. Um, so, and I did want to mention actually one other thing: the um, the Veterans Day ceremony, mm -hmm. which was just really, really wonderful. You did a great job then, and I'm always amazed at the children. There's not a peep, and they're so good, and they just they really focus on it. And um, so I really am thrilled that we are continuing to do that, and hope we do that. Um, mm -hmm. because I think it does give the kids here a special appreciation for that. And it's the only day. town of the four towns that actually does anything to, well, I shouldn't say that, but does anything with the outside community. Mm -hmm. um, so. The veterans from the various branches who attended the event came back to the school afterwards, um, visited all the classrooms, mm -hmm. uh, ate lunch with the kids, some serve lunch yes. to the kids. Oh, it's a nice. Yes. Yeah. Love that part. And, I mean, they just. They really can make connections. So professional. And the kids, yeah. the kids were in awe yeah. the entire day. And, and it's some kids only Exposure. encounter yeah. ever yeah. with yeah. anybody. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and when you think about experiences for a particular student during the school year, right. I mean, this easily can stand out right. as one of them, as one right. of their most memorable. Absolutely. So thank you to everyone, and Ed again did a, a lot of work on that, but it's a great thing that we do here, mm -hmm. so keep it going. That's all I've got, and we'll go um, in no collaborative, and you're on. <laughs> I'm on, all right. Um, so right when I started, it was um, brought to my attention that there was money in the budget for a Spanish teaching position for one day a week. Um, we are holding interviews next Tuesday, and we're looking to have that up and running sometime after Thanksgiving. Uh, we hope to have it on Fridays, where grades one through six will receive half an hour of instruction and kindergarten 15 minutes um, per week. And that's what it's looking like. We're still playing with a couple different models. Um, but that would allow each class to receive individual instruction. Right. Um, I had a meeting today with uh, Sarah Burstein, our second grade teacher, Louise Law, our curriculum director, and we're in the process of setting up an all-school literacy and writing uh, celebration, and this might be something that's coming up in the spring, and we're going to propose it at the next staff meeting. And ultimately, we would like it to touch on all academic disciplines and including the arts, music, phys ed, um, and our class as well. So that's possibly coming up down the, down the road. And uh, we recently had an instructional assistant resign. Um, so we're gonna, we posted that job on Monday and we're gonna be holding interviews in the next couple weeks for that as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Perfect. And what's the concert? I, oh, I'm sorry. Um, no, I don't know that particular group. So uh, Manquito is, um, okay. this was a, uh, it's being sponsored by the PTO. Yeah. Um, and it's in celebration of bringing uh, Spanish instruction back into ah, the building. Okay. Um, so that's coming up on December 5th. Great. It'll be a school-wide concert. School-wide, okay. Yeah. Nice. And um, actually, I've already talked to you about the first two, which is the um, budget timelines and procedures and the enrollment and trends. Um, and this feels like it happened a very long time ago, but I did <laughs> present my goals and objectives to a joint school committee meeting on October 29th. And um, I have seven goals and an action plan, and I am 
grateful for their attention because I think I spoke nonstop for an hour and a half. Yeah, that was um, a good meeting. <laughs> I thought it was great. I learned a lot. Well, good. And then I have have to get everyone back in February. One of the joys of having such a large school committee is trying to get you know that many people to come. And I can give you my progress at that point. <clears throat> and I went to the Mask Maths uh, joint conference, and I know Amy and Tracy did as well. Um, there were five school committee members in the district who went, so that was nice. And um, I actually didn't learn as much um, about the DDMs, the District Sherman Met Method measures and park and retail as I did about the Gettysburg Address, <laughs> which was really sort of the theme in conjunction with teaching the Common Core and breaking down lesson plans. So that was fascinating. Um, and we were to have had a special uh, meeting on the 14th to hear the results of the subcommittee reports, but people needed more time. They had all met. Um, but they felt they were in the initial stages. So we have scheduled um, another meeting on January 23rd. And, and I know there's some hard work going on. Patty's on the capital planning. Um, and I think the discussions, even if we don't come to any conclusions, are very rich and, and mm. worthwhile because people understand the need um, for obtaining things and maintaining buildings. and. We need to come up with a vehicle to do it that everybody is accepting of. And, and so that's that's our challenge. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have anything you wanted to add to that meeting or? No, I mean, it was a good meeting. It was productive. Um, we met for an hour. Justine was there. And um, we got some good ideas as to where to head for a, a definition that all the towns can agree to as to what will, you know, uh, be capital and what will be operating um, and we th I, we need to re-meet again because our rescheduled meeting I think got overlooked um, because Mr. Bergeron was out of town so uh, we, we do have to reschedule but we've got some good information going forward and I think we'll be able to come up with a good result. The only thing I did tell the other committees is that because we're waiting till after January any suggestions they have will not impact this year's budget it will be for next year and um, and that's fine. I think sometimes these processes right. take longer than, mm -hmm. than sometimes I would like, but, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think it was also nice to see the um, mix of school committee, um, you, Patty, and the finance committee and select board. And mm -hmm. working like that, I've never seen that happen in all my years. And yeah. it was really, it just, I think it, it adds a comfort level for everyone mm. to have a much better discussion about things um, mm. that we're more familiar with one another and, and the challenges that we all have, you know, and they're different, but we all need to work together. So I yeah. think that alone is worth its weight. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because as a result of that, I'm meeting with a finance committee member tomorrow, and I've had requests from other finance just to come in and sit and chat. So mm. I think that's. Uh, really important to establish those relationships so thank you and with that I think we are done do I have a motion to adjourn at 743 I'll make a motion to adjourn <laughs> at 743 second all those in favor aye, aye. great thank you